Today we're headed up to Northern California to cover a movie that I've been wanting to check out the filming locations of for at least the last two or three years. We're gonna be cruising around the Santa Cruz and Watsonville area to check out all the filming locations for the 1988 cult classic, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So, let's go see what we can find. Oh. And here it is, the first shots of the movie. The camera starts at the sky and then pans down to Big Top Burger, which would have been right here, of course, not really Big Top Burger in real life. I believe this is now just used as a kitchen for a food truck. It's not actually a restaurant that you can go inside of and sit down anymore. So Mooney pulls up to this intersection as Bob is crossing the street drinking a beer and behind him, you can see the Goodwill still here all these years later, different signage, but the store still here. Mooney cruises past the old county bank, which is now the Dignity Health Medical Group. So this is top of the world. And but now we're gonna slow it down a little bit for all you make out artists at the top of the world. In real life, a disc golf course, but in Killer Clowns from Outer Space, this is where all of the teenagers were parked, making out when the ice cream truck comes down the road and tries to sell them ice cream. And it was up here where Debbie and Mike are laying in that inner tube, looking up when they see that strange thing go across the sky and they decide to go investigate it. Come on, let's go check it out. Thanks a lot, Debbie. This is the Watsonville Community Hospital. But back in 1988, this was all an industrial park. And inside that industrial park is where they built the interior sets including the inside of the spaceship. Can you imagine having to go to the hospital to have a major surgery, and it turns out that you're having that surgery in the same space where they had to fight Clownzilla? So after discovering the spaceship, Mike and Debbie head to the police station because Debbie says her friend Dave can probably help them. Welcome to the Crescent Cove Police Station, formerly the Watsonville Police Station, now the Parks and Recreations Building. You can see it's changed a little bit, so the way it was in the movie, you would have walked out the front door and then straight down the front steps. And now the steps are on the right side of the door and the wheelchair ramp is on the left side of the door. Or if you're standing at the door, vice versa. So Dave's inside doing paperwork when he hears a commotion outside and heads out to see what's going on. And that's when he sees Mike and Debbie pulling up in front and they smack right into the back of his police car. So Mike and Debbie would have pulled up right here in front of the police station and Dave's police car would have been parked right about where that white car is. So I was really excited to come here and try and get inside of the Crescent Cove police station and try and match up some of those pictures of Mooney sitting at his desk. But one thing that I didn't take into consideration is this is a city building and they're not open on weekends. And today is Sunday and I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. So yeah, this is a, this is a real bummer. I'm pretty disappointed. Now, they've got some, you can look through the front door, they've got some shades pulled down, but you can kind of see if you look in between the shades, right there, those two doors, those are the doors that you can see behind Mooney. His desk would have been right in front of those. But you know what, this isn't good enough. We gotta figure out something else. So I reached out to this office by email and the people that work here were nice enough to snap a few pictures and send them over for me. So this is the front office and those two doors right there are the ones that can be seen when Mooney is bringing the punks into the police station in the beginning of the movie. You also see those two doors behind Mooney a little bit later in the movie. We'll get to that in a bit. And when Debbie and Mike are telling Dave about the clowns, 
Mooney's standing in a doorway listening, and you can see this vault-style door right behind him. It's still there. Now, they did send over a couple of other cool pictures, and we'll get to those in a little bit. So Dave agrees to help Debbie and Mike, and they go outside and get into his police car, which would have been parked right about here. When Rudy's on his way to the pharmacy, you see his feet passing by a marble wall. That's actually the Goodwill building located right across the street from the pharmacy. Uh, this right here used to be the pharmacy. It's now a clothing store and they've changed it. Right here is where the entrance to the pharmacy was. They now moved it to the corner, but it's still cool that all these years later, even though there's no entrance here, they still have a robotic clown out front. Although now a clothing store named El Dorado Fashion, this building housed Johnson Drugs since the 1920s, and it was here obviously into the 1980s. Now, like I mentioned, the front has changed. Basically right there in the center of those windows was the front entrance. They've since moved it over to the corner of the building. Now, at least some of the movie was filmed inside of this building, but as you can see, it's kind of hard to match stuff up because there's so many clothes in here, but really not much is the same except for maybe those pillars. However, I can tell you that this is where the front counter was. It was right here where Mr. Myers was on the phone calling Mooney to let him know that he's got a bit of a problem. And it was right here where Rudy stood waiting to pay for his merchandise. Hey, Bugs Bunny vitamins, I remember those. I used to take those along with Flintstones and Jetsons, and, well, whatever. This is the gazebo at the Watsonville City Plaza, and this is where Spikey puts on a puppet show. And we came here today to recreate that puppet show, but just as my luck would have it, not only is the gazebo permanently closed to the public, you can see they've got a locked gate with a sign that says keep out, but on top of that, there's a church celebration going on right in front of the gazebo. There's a whole bunch of people, a live band, preaching, a whole nine yards, but I'm gonna do my best. So right where this gate now is stopping people from going into the gazebo, this is where the guy would have walked up the stairs and saw the puppet show going on. And yeah, nothing creepy about that at all. Uh, right here is where the puppet theater would have been. You can see those lamps on either side of the puppet theater. And if you remember, the guy was not impressed at all. Uh, that is until Spikey stood up and turned him into human cotton candy. But yep, right over there, that's where the puppet show was. <sighs> you know what? We came here to put on a puppet show and we're gonna put on a damn puppet show. Now, just so you know, in order to put on this puppet show in front of all those people standing there, I had to put my son, who's almost as tall as me, on my shoulders and lift him up. It's a really tall gazebo, so it was pretty difficult. So there's a very quick scene of the police car driving by some buildings. And if you slow that scene down and turn the brightness all the way up, you can see that one of the businesses is the Harry Chair Barber Shop. And if you look right here, the Harry Chair Barber Shop is unbelievably still in business all these years later. Good for them. So before Mike and Dave head up to the top of the world, Dave insists on dropping Debbie off at her house. Uh, this right here, was Debbie's house. And as you can see, not too much has changed on it. It almost still looks exactly the same, except for that tree out front has gotten a lot bigger and now blocks a lot of the house. Other than that, it still looks pretty similar. And we do see Debbie's house a few other times in the movie, but it's almost always this exact same shot. Now, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. This is the alley where the biker gang is hanging out when Shorty shows up and there's a little incident and it starts off by showing the bikers coming down the alley and they're passing by a bunch of windows. You can see all of those windows have since been covered, but you can see where they used to be. And if you count the windows and go all the way down, you can see that it was right over here where that doorway used to be. And that's where the bikers were hanging out. And of course, that's when Shorty comes riding down the alley on his bike and there's an incident between Shorty and the bikers. And I think you know what happens. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to pass. Put up your dukes, put up your dukes. Okay. Come on, put up your dukes. 
What are you gonna do? Knock my block off? Back at Big Top Burger, we see a little girl who's really sad because her mom's forcing her to eat yummy junk food. And that's when she looks outside and notices Jumbo the Clown waving at her. Now Jumbo would have been sitting right about here. You can see that donut shop sign on the left side of Jumbo. I believe at the time it was a Winchell's Donuts and it's now a Miss Donuts. Now as Jumbo moves closer to the window, you get a better shot of that apartment building on the right side, which as you can see, hasn't changed too much except for maybe the color. So the little girl is actually about to come outside and Jumbo would have been standing right here waiting to hit her over the head with that mallet. Luckily, the little girl's mom stops babbling long enough to realize that her daughter's missing and she runs over and saves her life just in the nick of time. Woo! Meanwhile, Mike and Dave finally arrive at the top of the world and Dave notices that the place seems to be abandoned, but everybody's cars are still parked right here. So Dave stops his police car and he gets out to investigate. And as he's approaching Bob's car, he notices that it's covered in something that appears to be cotton candy. Now, whenever I watch this scene, I always feel just a little bad for poor Joe. He just seems so genuinely scared when he looks over and notices Slim riding next to him. Now, it's kind of hard to say where they filmed the chase, but notice that 15 mile per hour sign on the right and those white posts on the left. Now, I had a feeling that they might have filmed this at New Brighton State Beach. And as I was driving through, I found this 15 mile per hour sign and these white posts. And considering that they definitely filmed the end of this scene here, I'm almost positive that they also filmed the chase here. So Slim continues to torment Joe and crash into him, causing him to swerve and crash right through a fence. And right here is the fence that he crashes through and then right down there onto the beach. Now the road that Joe was supposedly driving on is actually just a pedestrian access to get down to the beach. You can see right there, there's the fence that he crashes through. There's another extremely quick shot of the police car driving past a sporting goods store, which used to be located right here. It then passes right in front of fire station number three. It was on the side of this building where Slim was doing the shadow puppets. Kinda sorta, you can see it doesn't look the same, and that's because the building that used to be here was torn down and replaced with this building. But right here is where that brick wall would have been where Slim was doing the shadow puppets. And yet another extremely quick shot of the police car rounding a corner, passing by the county bank. Now this is the exact same county bank that Mooney drives by in the beginning of the movie. A few moments later, Mike spots Slim doing the shadow puppets on the brick wall and they watch as one of the shadow puppets devours a group of people. Mike freaks out, steps on the gas, and cranks the steering wheel. Now, although the building that he's doing the shadow puppets on has been torn down, the building that you see across the street is still here and still looks the same. Notice the two different heights on the top of the building? So the police car is now headed right towards Slim, but he shoots straight up into the air, causing the police car to almost crash right into the side of the building. So Mike and Dave are now sitting there trying to figure out what's going on. They look over and notice an ice cream truck coming out of the alley with the Terenzi brothers following after it. Mike sees the ice cream truck coming out of this alley and he tells Dave that he's gonna catch up with his friends and he'll meet up with him later. Right here is where Mike comes running around the corner. You can see this building behind him. And there's a little window that can be seen. It's now blocked by that tree. Mike then runs behind the building and finds the ice cream truck crashed into a wall. Now this is right behind that building and this may or may not be where they shot that scene. Meanwhile, back at the station, Mooney gets paid a visit by Jumbo who shuffles into the station as if he's Prince. Mooney places him under arrest and Jumbo then shuffles into a jail cell. That obviously doesn't go too well, 
and when Dave arrives, he finds that Mooney's been turned into a puppet. And right here is where the Mooney puppet scene took place, those same two doors that we see earlier in the movie, and that window that Dave is standing in front of, that's directly across from those two doors. So Mike's now driving in the ice cream truck with the Terenzi brothers, but unfortunately, the street that they're driving down looks completely different now. Almost every building on this block has since been torn down, but this is where the ice cream truck was driving. Just then, the ice cream truck comes around the corner and they run right into the clown parade. It's pretty wild walking around right here and thinking about the fact that one night in the 80s, that was all going on right here on Cooper Street. I mean, imagine being a local and you're out for maybe a late night bike ride and then you stumble upon this. Definitely some wild times. So when the ice cream truck first arrives at the clown parade, they're supposedly turning onto Cooper Street. But in real life, they're actually turning off of Cooper Street onto Pacific Avenue. They would have been driving away from the Clam Parade. And then when they decide to get the heck out of there, they're actually making a left onto Pacific Avenue away from Cooper Street. So the ice cream truck pulls up to Debbie's house just as Slim is tying a balloon to the back of his car that has Debbie trapped in it. Slim's car would have been parked right here. Like I said, pretty much the same shot that we see earlier in the movie. Now for the chase between Slim and the ice cream truck, that all takes place basically on the same block right next to Debbie's house. Now this is where they pass by Dave and he then joins the chase. And this is actually right across the street from Debbie's house. They then pass by two houses that are right next door to Debbie's house. They then immediately pass by those same two houses, but the camera is now pointed a little bit more to the left and you can actually see Debbie's house in this shot. They then round the corner and those are the same houses that you saw when they were passing by Dave. Now what's funny about this scene is they're having the chase in Debbie's residential neighborhood. They see the police car and they come to a stop just beyond a bridge in an area that looks nothing like Debbie's neighborhood. Now this is actually at New Brighton State Beach. You'll find this pretty close to the main entrance as you're on your way to the parking lot. So Dave jumps in the ice cream truck and they head down the coast to the Santa Cruz boardwalk. So where would you hide if you were a clown? The amusement park. And we see them traveling down this road headed towards the Santa Cruz boardwalk. As you can see, there's not actually a boardwalk over here. That was just a matte painting, but they do actually go to the Santa Cruz boardwalk and we're gonna head over there right now. Now, how cool is this? Right here is where the facade of the crazy house was. That means it was somewhere right down here where they melted the security guard into a big pile of melty bloody ice cream. So right about here is where they built the facade for the crazy house. And this section of the building is still the same. It even has the same color scheme. And we see the security guard standing out in front of the crazy house. And then the camera shoots this way and we see the clown car pulling up. Now some of the stuff here still matches up. You still have this building with the light post. Also, there's still a Ferris wheel, not the same type of Ferris wheel, but this building right here with the pointed roof, that's still the same. So all the clowns get out of the car and they're now holding pies and they begin to shower the security guard with those pies, turning them into a big pile of melted bloody ice cream.
A few moments later, the ice cream truck pulls up and we get basically the same two shots that we saw when the clown car arrives. So everybody heads inside the crazy house, they battle all the clowns, they save Debbie, and eventually they have to face Clownzilla. Dave tells Mike and Debbie to make a run for it while he stays behind to fight Clownzilla. Mike and Debbie come running out of the crazy house and pass right by the giant dipper and underneath this overhang. And a few moments later we see him pass by Hot Dog on a Stick and the roller coaster again. What's going on? Why can't they seem to get out of here? Ah, it's because they're running so slow. Now I just wanted to point out that here at the boardwalk, they have movie posters for all the movies that were filmed here, but no killer clowns from outer space. What's going on, boardwalk? So as they come running out, all the police cars are pulling up, and this is supposedly just outside of the boardwalk. But as you can see, the parking lot across from the Santa Cruz boardwalk looks nothing like the one that you see in the movie. And when the camera shoots in the other direction, that doesn't match up either. I mean, look at that roller coaster. That looks nothing like the Giant Dipper. And that's because the shot of the amusement park that you see is actually a map painting. And those parking lot scenes were filmed in an entirely different place. Supposedly, those scenes were filmed in Los Angeles, in the San Fernando Valley. And the reason why is because what you see in the movie is actually the alternate ending. In the original ending, Dave and the Terenzi brothers both die and audiences didn't like that. So they had to come back and shoot a new ending and that's why it's filmed in a completely different place. All right, so now back to the movie. So everybody stands there watching as the circus tent flies up into the sky and they then watch as it explodes, killing Dave and the Terenzi brothers. But moments later, the clown car falls to earth and Dave climbs out. And just after that, so do the Terenzi brothers. Yay! Everybody lives happily ever after. That is, of course, until they're smashed in the face by pies falling from the sky. Hello? Oh, oh, Kurt? Yeah, this is Kurt. What? I think I have a bit of a problem here. So do I. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.